your eyes. So just cover in here and it looks like what you get in our TPMS set. Now this is a TPMS set that's gonna work with our head units. So it's gonna give you live uh, sort of pressures and imps from your tires and it can take up to 12 sensors. So here we just have external sensors out at the moment. Uh, the system also will work with our internal sensors and we will release those as well. External sensors are just like easier, obviously screw them straight into your valve caps, pretty straightforward. Internal sensors are the tire has to come off and they just fit and you replace the actual valve stem and the internal arc sensor actually sits inside the tire. So you get your sensors, external sensors here, they obviously screw on, and it's sort of waterproof, I'm a built tough, they're gonna last, that's fine. They have a small CR battery inside, which is like a coin battery, which you can replace. And we use our uh, Maxwell, like a decent brand, like the few ones in here, and we'll have spares of those on our website. Um, you just unscrew that to replace them. Probably gonna get sort of two to three years out of them, depending how often you're driving, obviously, because that's when they're gonna be like, activated. So that's the sensors, so you can obviously so you screw these onto your car, bus, truck, or onto your trailer or caravan as well. So we have like a six sensor kit here, so you can see. And they've each got this like a number on them. Front left normally starts with like one, and then front right becomes two, and so on. In this little bag here, we have our lock nuts, which you spin on first, and then like back against the sensor and a spanner to help do those up. Then you have the uh, US uh, B receiver. So this is gonna plug into this cable here, our uh, USB one, plugs in like so, obviously clicks onto where the little click bit is. You'll hear it go click. And then you can slide in that little gray locking tab. That's all locked in now. This here you'll be mounting pretty much underneath your passenger seat or like kind of near your center console and like down the bottom of the car there. This here is going to plug into another USB unit coming out of a head unit. And basically these are going to talk a wireless to, uh, to one another. So if you just got a car with like four sensors, that's all you've got to do and you'll be good to go. Um, so that's where you get in the kit for that. Now if you've got over four sensors and you would have got a repeater in the kit as well. Now the reason for like so this is if it's a six, eight or 10 sensor kit, you're most likely going to be using uh, the rear ones on a caravan or trailer or what, or whatnot. And the distance is going to be a bit further. You need a repeater to help increase that distance. So the repeater works the same, plugs in, push your clip in like so. And then this needs a power source. So obviously a 12 volt power source. So you, majority of people will take this off their uh, trailer plug or maybe your Anderson plug or whatever else you have um, back there for a, like a power source. You're probably going to be mounting this on the A frame of your caravan and what I would suggest that I like doing is just like zip tie it in place at first. This is super light. You can zip tie this and it would stay there like forever. And just test that you're getting your data coming in. And if it is all good, then you can mount it up properly. And normally you'll probably uh, zip tie this almost on the bottom of the A-frame because you've got to think if you put it on the inside and then you kind of look directly at your uh, tires, it has to go through that main like chassis rail. So if it's on like, the bottom, it can, it can see it a lot more easily. And then we also do include uh, like a mounting nut bracket here. So you can actually uh, mount it down. Um, Obviously using this like steel bracket here and there's some screws and other uh, bolts for that. Again, up to you, you know, how you um, sort, of, sort of like mount it and do it however you want. Just obviously like zip tie it in place first and test it. Uh, that's not signal coming through. So that's the repeater. Basically, that's where you get in the kit. So fairly straightforward. Then we'll go to the head unit. Uh, now we'll install the app and we'll set it up. So before you start the head unit up, just turn the Bluetooth on your phone off. We just do this because otherwise you're going to get your Android Auto or your like Apple CarPlay up, pop up like wirelessly. So we've got that off. Come into here, we do need to give the uh, unit like internet. Now you can hook to your house, other Wi-Fi, hotspot to your phone, or if you if you have a SIM card in your like, sort of unit, it's going to have a uh, like Wi-Fi the whole time anyway. So you won't have to like, uh, worry about it. Now, sometimes what you have to do here is you need to, I'm just seeing if my, Hotspot's gonna come up on my phone. Seems to be an issue with like the Apple phone. Sometimes you just gotta turn it on like, off and back on. I just turn my hotspot off and back on on my phone. And normally that sorts it out. Don't know why that is, there you go. Now, once you've given the uh, unit internet, what we wanna do is we just wanna go into the, um, into a browser and just hit head to, um, the VDA website. I'm just going to go TPMS VDA and hopefully it gives me the page coming up earlier. There we go. Um, we just want to go to the product page, which is what I'm getting to anyway. Now, what I want to do is I want to scroll down to the bottom of the page here. And at the bottom, we've got click here to download. That's how we're going to get the, um, the app onto our head unit. Going to get that, click the download button here. 
and download anyway. Now we'll always keep the latest version on our page here so you can come back and get it. Um, Let's open it here. If you're on our uh, like M or like X like series, it could be a bit different. I'm on I like the M series here, but it's uh, basically going to be the same. Click allow, click install. Now that's installed. Now I just want to click done, and we'll go to the home screen, and then we'll look at for all our apps, and we will see it come up there. TWTWMS. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to add it onto the home page here because I want to have it on the home page because the quick way to get to it obviously is if you can train a steering wheel by a button or, or like something to like take you back to the home screen and then like bang on that and then go home again and then like back to your car play or like Android Auto. If you get alarms or whatever, they're gonna pop up anyway. But that's the app installed. Okay, so now we've got the app installed. Now what we wanna do is, is we do wanna get our receiver, a USB receiver, and we're gonna put that in. So like that kit before I showed you, it's all in here. Here's the receiver. We're gonna plug that into our USB here. Now majority of the time, I would probably suggest people like, so like obviously I tuck the cable up under here and you end up on mounting this, probably kind of like up against here, but like underneath the seat here, or just directly underneath the seat. Or we could even put it underneath the center console here if you wanna like lift that up or whatnot. Now the idea obviously is like your tires are like around here and if it's kind of in like the middle of the car down there it's sort of like a short way you know for the signals to come in so that is like why we're like mounting it there. You could put it in other places um, but we found out that is the best place for the range and whatnot. I will plug that receiver in and you're going to get this here and go yes please always and go okay. Now every time the car starts it's going to get that coming in now yes please allow to display that obviously a beeping at me and there we go the app's all started up a bit like noisy you can just push that button so we get rid of it oh noise for now now you want to grab your sort of sensors so number one front left you can see it's here like sort of number one is a front left we'll just cover the first or four for now because majority of people are going to probably look like set up a four and then in like the next part of the video we will cover the caravanning part so some people can skip the caravanning part because they don't won't be putting them on there or they don't have they haven't got the caravan on at like the moment what we want to do is we want to grab out our spanner a lock nut and i'll show you what we do here sensor number one front left so I've just got an older one on here, all like all like ready, which I will take off because we don't need that. Spin it on. Now it's up to you if you use like the these are like lock are like nuts that are more for like a fifth than actually holding these on. Traveled some fairly good roads with these, or bad roads I should say, and they don't come off if they're just screwed on. But again, depending where you live, if people like to sort of like knock these off, and some people do it, I don't know why you would because they got no use for anyone else. But anyway, that's what you get. So screw on the lock nut, screw on the sensor, and you're here it goes. Screw it till it's tight. Bring that back back again a bit, and then you can get your little banner in here and give it a little shift me up and there you go number one's on so all going well we should have something on our screen here and you can see we do we got 32.7 psi uh, like coming in and 29 degrees that's what we want to see so that's like working so I'll, go, I'll quickly go around now and i'll do all four and we'll just uh, check we have more coming in if you have any uh, like issues unscrew the sensor screw it back on see if that like fixes it if you still have an issue it could be a battery issue or like a faulty sensor the faulty sensor could be pretty rare uh, like, i don't know like, batteries can happen try to replace the battery if you're still having issues, get in touch with us, we'll sort you out. But you should screw them on and you should be good. Gone around and you can see I've put them all in and we can see we've got our pressures all coming in and some temps. Now what you can do is you can go for a drive if you want and we'll just keep an eye on them over the, side of the next few days and see how it all works. So that is the car, car look setup and the app here. Now if you come into TPMS setup, you can see a okay, pop up alert will like come up. So that's kind of what you saw before. So no matter like what you have going on in here, it's going to beep and you're going to get that uh, sort of bar coming up. Uh, so like sound alert can be like off or on. That's currently off because I pushed that like mute button up the top there. Um, spare tire, caravan selection I will cover soon. Tire interchange is if you um, obviously swap the other uh, tires around. Now majority of people, external like sensors, you might as well just like, spin them off and spin them back on. For example, if you swap a one and four, just take the sensors off and let's, look, and let's look, swap them around. Or you can do it on here as well. This is like more for if you have an internal sensor, obviously and you can't just spin it off. But for example, one, two. So that's gonna say, do you wanna confirm to swap a one and two around? I won't because I wanna leave it as it is. So always one, two, three, four is the positions. So what it would be like doing is like changing the sensors. So each sensor has a unique ID and I'll just swap these two around. 
there we go. That's fine. Temperature unit PSI, so you're probably gonna have that. Now, if we're in here, you can see we've got high pressure alarm, low pressure alarm, high temp alarm. So you can change these, obviously. Obviously, our first axle was at one and two, and so and like second axle was at three and four. Obviously, sometimes you might need to have these like different if the back tires obviously have a bit more like sort of weight in them with a caravan or like whatnot. But anyway, come to this little modify. Drag these up and down as you want and click done. So you can see I just change it to 45.9, 26.1, high temp, still the same. That's pretty straightforward. Low battery warning, connection area warning. That'll just give like warnings if like, the other batteries and the sensor. Um, that's basically how you set your high and, and like low pressure alarms and also your high temp alarm. You're also gonna get like auto alarms if there's a quick increase in temp or a quick increase or decrease in tire pressure. Those ones that you don't have to like set, that are just gonna come up anyway. Now I'll just show you what happens if we turn the unit off. So this is obviously you turn the car off, you jumped out, blah, 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 you jump back in the car. What is normally going to happen is, and it won't happen here because I've got the I've got the Bluetooth on my Alexa phone off. Is it going to come and like sort of pop up like the tire other watcher one if you didn't have anything else going on, or if you had like a car play, it's going to go, it's going to pretty much like show the tire watcher app, and then your car play or like Android Auto is going to pop up. So that's how that works. And obviously to get back into it, you just like click on it and home back to your apps. So that basically covers like setting it up as a car and setting your pressures. Now, uh, this is for a caravan uh, trailer setup. So if you've got a caravan or trailer and have to set that up as well, here we go, this is what we're gonna do. If you don't have one of those and you only have the uh, four sensors, you can skip this part. Um, but basically we're coming into TPMS setup, caravan selection. This was a, like a six sensor kit. So obviously you got a few different options here. We've got obviously like a single axle caravan, a Jewix or Caravan. There's a couple different options here for trailers, also like different stuff going on. But so for so so majority of people are going to use that one or that one. Now if we go back, you can see we have this coming up now, and you can just click that again to stop that like, beeping sound. Now you can see if we come in here, five and six are set up. So what you have to do is screw it on like these, and we'll get that's our pressure and chimps. I like coming through into these. Now, a majority of like people like driving along, okay, drop the caravan off, cool. Just touch the caravan, the caravan's gone. Uh, when you hitch back up, you touch the caravan, the caravan's back. So that's how you can deal with that. And we'll go in exactly the same way you screwed on these other, other sensors is how you put on like those ones. I don't have a caravan on the, at the moment, so I've actually just put one on the spare tire and one on the air, on the airbag just to show you what like, would happen. So I normally just screw them onto your caravan and you get others coming through again. Again, obviously we're getting like an alarm here because that's obviously like low pressure with about five pounds in an airbag. Now the only other extra thing you have to do with your caravan is if it's a single axle caravan, you might get away without using the repeater. Now, the only way you're gonna find out is try and screw a sensor on. Screw it off to the like, edge of the thread, so it's like, basically like all the way off, but it's still just like hanging in the like, same position, so it's it's like, not engaging the valve at all. We wanna do that and, and not to like, take it off completely, because if we take it off completely and like, put it like somewhere else, then it isn't gonna give us a true indication. So screw it off to the very edge of the thread, come through and see if you get your alarm uh, coming on here. If you do, that's a pretty good sign. You might be able to get away without like, using the repeater. Again, Again, you're gonna to have to uh, go for a test drive, see if you get your pressures and your temps coming through reliably. If you don't, you're gonna get like a no signal come through. So you have to test if you're not getting it coming through or it's a bigger caravan, you need the repeater. We suggest using the repeater anyway because it's just gonna prov uh, provide like reliability um, and uh, sort of make sure every like, signal we're gonna hit and get our pressures and temps are, are coming in. So again, um, haven't got the caravan like, with me here, but this here would like basically be like mounted uh, like somewhere in the caravan and uh, zip tie it to uh, like, test it. You can actually even just power this like a nine volt like battery if you just want to sort of like take the like, zip tie all in a, a location like just to like test it. Probably gonna go for a drive for 20 to 30 like, minutes uh, and make sure your uh, pressures and temps are coming in. Pull, all coming in, all good. You can uh, mount it like properly there. If you're still getting uh, no signal, try and move the repeater a bit further back or like, maybe underneath a uh, like, chassis. You've got to kind of like, think about it as sort of a line of like, sight, you kind of want out of this to be able to see the tires as best as possible. So you wouldn't want to have like a big water tank in the way or something, you know what I mean? So that's up basically it. That's how you do the caravan part and the repeater. Yeah, that's, that covers all your setup. Any issues, just get in touch with us. Just a little video here too, like actually just like showing you what happens when you have an alarm come on. Wouldn't matter like what app or, or like what you had going on the head unit here. I'll go and spin a sensor off and you will see. So just spin that to the edge. <laughs> edge of it so like Fred and you can see you've got a big bar coming up here 
you can see here leaking coming up. Now if you like, you want to turn off the beeping or whatever, um, just click that and it'll stop the beeping. Um, you're still going to be, again you're like a alarms here, you can click the X button and you can say like no more like, reminders until a certain time. Um, so it's going to say okay, we won't tell you anymore. But you've still obviously got that issue going on there. So that's if you just want to be like, okay, no, I don't want to hear about it. I know what it is. It's all good. So that will just allow you to um, mute it. Or probably need to stop, check out what's going on and have a look. But like sometimes obviously you might just have to like, shut it down. But that's just sort of like showing you what happens and how you can sort of mute it um, and stop those notifications coming in. Yeah, I just screwed that valve back on, all back on normal. That's basically covered it all there, so that's how the system works, how it installs, how it works on caravans, whatnot. We'll be bringing out some improvements on the app over time. Thanks very much.